What's up everyone? In this very exciting video, we're going to take our first look at gaming on Mac using DXMT with Crossover. If you're familiar with Crossover, or familiar with Wine in general, you have seen and used different translation layers like Wine D3D, which translates DirectX versions 1 through 11 into OpenGL, or you may have used DXVK, which translates DirectX into Molten VK, and then Molten VK is converted into Metal. Or most recently, we got D3D Metal, which came from the game porting toolkit created by Apple. D3D Metal translates DirectX 11 and 12 games directly into Metal. This was pretty huge for Mac gaming, as we finally had a very performant DirectX 12 translation layer. The biggest issue that D3D Metal has is that it's closed source, meaning the Mac gaming community can't go onto GitHub and make D3D Metal faster or more compatible. It's up to Apple and Apple alone to improve the code. It also has special licenses that forbid D3D Metal from being used in applications other than the game porting toolkit, Crossover, Whiskey, and other wine applications like Heroic, Mythic, and Kegworks. The majority of the Mac gaming videos posted on this channel are running using D3D Metal through Crossover. But now, DXMT has joined the battle. DXMT skips the extra translation steps and translates DirectX 11 directly into Metal. This means better performance and smoother gameplay for a ton of games. DXMT focuses on 64-bit DX11 games for now, but the strong suit for DXMT is that it's basically an open-source D3D metal, and it's already proven to be faster in certain games. In this video, I'll show how you can test out DXMT for yourself using CX Patcher and Crossover 24. Then we'll check out some truly incredible gameplay, showing just how revolutionary DXMT can be. So we're going to patch Crossover to give it DXMT capabilities. Normally, Crossover allows us to run games with either D3D Metal, DXVK, or Wine D3D, and we can choose which method to use by toggling them on or off in the Crossover interface. Once patched, CX Patcher will replace DXVK with DXMT, leaving us with two versions of Crossover on our Mac. One will be the original Crossover, and the other will be Crossover with DXMT capabilities. Make sure to only use the patched version of Crossover for DXMT testing. For everything else, use the original Crossover app. Once on CodeWeavers.com, click Crossover, select Mac OS, and click Free Trial. Then click Download Trial Now. Double click the Crossover.zip to unzip it. Once the Crossover app unzips, we're going to drag it into our Applications folder. So now we have Crossover installed on our Mac. Next, it's time to download CX Patcher and DXMT. Click the CX Patcher link in this video's description, and it'll take you to Itala Mandara's GitHub page. We want to download the latest version that will allow us to use DXMT. As of recording this video, that's version 0.5.8 for Crossover 24.0.5. So under the description, it says new experimental option to integrate DXMT courtesy of 3Shane, new Molten VK build courtesy of GSENX, and then it has instructions on how to integrate DXMT. It says, first of all, DXMT is in an alpha stage. It can be unstable and cause crashes. Use at your own risk. Then we have instructions. Basically, we need to download the DXMT build. Then we're going to unzip it. Once we unzip it, we should have a folder named build release or build. And then we're going to open CX Patcher, click on Advanced Options. There should be a toggle to install DXMT. It'll ask us to locate the DXMT folder that we just downloaded. And then we should be able to patch crossover to allow it to use DXMT. So at the bottom of this page, you can see the assets. We want cxpatcher.app.zip, so I'm going to click it to download. Next, we need to download DXMT. And in order to do that, we're going to have to make a GitHub account. So if you already have an account, you can click Sign In, or if you need to make a new account, click Sign Up. It'll ask for an email and for a password. I love cats. Then choose a username. Once we've made our GitHub page, we can click the download link for DXMT, which I included in this video's description. Okay, once our download is done, if we go to our Downloads folder, 
I now have two zip files here. I have CXPatcher, so I'm going to double click that to unzip it. And then we have our DXMT file here, which is called Artifacts Release, and I'm going to double click that. Next, I'm going to right click CXPatcher and click Open. If you get a warning that says CXPatcher not opened, click Done, click on System Settings, scroll down to Privacy and Security, scroll all the way down, and then where it says CXPatcher was blocked to protect your Mac, you can click Open anyway. Once CXPatcher is open, we're going to need to type in the password, which is I will not ask code weavers for support or refund. Then press enter. So I'm following the instructions here. It says to click advanced options. Then I'm going to toggle on install DXMT. Click locate DXMT folder. The folder is located in my downloads folder, so I'm going to click downloads and then I'm going to select the build release folder and click open. I want the metal HUD to always be up, so I'm going to toggle on metal HUD always on. So now we're ready to patch crossover. I'm going to exit out of the advanced settings. I'm going to go to my applications folder and find the crossover app that I downloaded. And I'm going to drag it into CX Patcher and let go. Hopefully, CXPatcher will say crossover.app has been successfully patched, and then we can exit out of CXPatcher. Next, I'm going to go to my Applications folder and look for my crossover apps. You can see that I have my Crossover Original and Crossover. Crossover is my patched version, which has DXMT capabilities. I'm going to double-click it to launch it. And even if you have old bottles installed from your original crossover, to properly use DXMT, we're going to have to make a new bottle specifically for DXMT. So I'm going to click Bottle, New Bottle. I'm going to name it DXMT and click Create. Once we have our new bottle created, I'm going to toggle on what says DXBK but is now DXMT. And I'm going to turn on MSync for best performance. Next, I'm going to install Steam into my bottle. So once the Steam installation is complete, I'm going to double click Steam to launch it. Keep in mind that Steam might take a couple minutes to launch. Once it's open, you can log in. And once we're logged into our Steam, testing games is pretty much as easy as downloading them and trying to launch them. So let's check out some footage of games running with DXMT through Crossover on Mac. So here's some really nice gameplay from the game Europa. With D3D Metal, the game is a stuttery mess on pretty much every Apple Silicon chip, but look at it side by side with DXMT. It's getting almost 15 to 20 more frames per second, and it has a lot less stuttering. Both instances of the game are running at 900p. However, with DXMT, Metal FX is upscaling by a 2 times factor. Metal FX works a bit differently compared to what's built into native Apple Silicon ports. Currently, you can enable Metal FX using environment variables, but hopefully Crossover will include an easier option for this in the future. But for now, here's how you can set it up manually. Select your bottle in Crossover, click Open C Drive, ensure that Show Path Bar is enabled, and then select the folder one step back in the path, Next, right-click cxbottle.configuration and open it with text edit. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the document, and we want to find the section that says Environment Variables. I'm going to press Return to make a new line, and I've included the commands in the description of this video. I'm just going to copy and paste them for my notes. To enable Metal FX Upscaling, we're going to use the command d3d11.metal-spatial-upscale-factor equals, and then we're going to put a number between 1.0 and 2.0. So I'm going to carefully copy this command and go to my environment variables and paste it. Once complete, I'm going to go to File and save the document. Here's another tip for editing the config file. With DXMT, you can set a preferred frame rate cap, and I highly recommend checking it out. 
using DXMT's frame limiter often provides a noticeably smoother frame delivery. By directly limiting the frame rate through metal with DXMT, you'll often get the smoothest experience possible. Check out this gameplay from Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. This is footage of the game running through DXMT with the FPS uncapped. Now, I'm going to add the environment variable dxmt config equals d3d11.preferred max frame rate, and I'm going to set it to equal 60. I'm going to copy the line and paste it into the CX bottle configuration file. So, this is the same area in Bomb Rush, and look at how much smoother the line graph is. This is the M4 Mac Mini running the game with ultra graphics at 4K like a champ. I'll have to test out the metal frame limiter more, but it really does seem to improve performance in quite a few games. This is gameplay from the game Paper Clay, and is an example of the D3D Metal slow-mo bug that a lot of games made with Unity have. Pretty much, if you toggle VSync on in the game, the game runs at a very slow pace. But here you can see that with DXMT, that's not a problem. You can turn VSync on or off, whatever you want, and the game will run at a normal speed. Here's some footage from Kenna Bridge of Spirits. I'm not going to do a side-by-side -side for this one, I just kind of want to admire how nice the game looks. It runs really smoothly through DXMT, and it's a great way to play the game. So next I'm going to show some footage from Visions of Mana. There are some flickering textures in this footage, so if you're strobe sensitive, viewer discretion is advised. So when using a Mac with an M3 chip, Visions of Mana has a terrible texture flicker that pretty much breaks the game. I loaded up the demo with DXMT and went to the same area and that flickering is completely gone. This is Outer Wilds running on an M1 Pro. Notice how much more stable DXMT's frame rate is compared to D3D Metal. I'm super impressed with Outer Wilds' performance when using DXMT. It's incredibly smooth, and it really feels like playing a native port of the game. So that's the first look at DXMT on Mac. Is DXMT the next big way to game? Let me know what you think in the comments. A big thank you to Jay Fishin for helping make this video, and shout out to 3Shane and the entire DXMT team for their incredible work. Also, a big thank you to Itala Mandara and GSENX for adding DXMT to CX Patcher. Thanks for watching.